24th of July, everybody. It's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to another rendition of Out of the Vault. And today, on this sweltering Independence Day, we talk about that wonderful Disney character who is all about being independent and just being a child and never growing up. You guessed it. The main character from the 14th Disney animated classic, released in 1953, Peter Pan. Of course, we all know the story of Peter Pan in one form or another. The story of a boy who doesn't want to grow up and lives in the wonderful world of Neverland where he fights pirates, battles with Indians, and this time around he brings the darling children, Wendy, John, and Michael, to share in his adventures. So, Peter Pan is a story that has been told in so many different ways, and the Disney film is the one that a lot of people remember, especially considering the fact that alongside Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh, it also featured one of the other most recognizable Disney characters in the Disney plethora, Tinkerbell. This movie, on the other hand, I always remembered not really enjoying it as much as most people did when I was little. I did have fun with it, but never truly thought that it was a grand movie. I mean, one thing for sure about this Peter Pan film is it's not epic at all. You compare it to movies like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, or The Lion King, or Pinocchio, and you're not really going to get something that really gets to that par. What I've actually realized after watching it, and again, this is a movie that I probably haven't seen in about 25 years, Peter Pan is kind of an asshole, Tinkerbell is one hell of a bitch, and Captain Hook's really not much of a villain. He's just this bitter old man who just wants revenge because... Peter, being the douchebag that he was, cut off his hand and threw it to the crocodile. Peter Pan, what the hell's up with you, man? No wonder you want need a mother so badly. You're kind of an ass. You really are. The movie is really not so great, and the songs are kind of forgettable. I mean, they're kind of goofy and quirky, and that's pretty much all you're going to get from Peter Pan. But one thing you will get is you'll just get that enchanted feeling that you get from every single Disney classic, and you will definitely have your fun with it, but you probably, if you're an adult like me who grew up with Disney films and probably remember it being so enchanting, you're still going to get that enchantment, but you're still going to say, as a grown-up, yeah, Peter, I'm sorry, I kind of grew out of you as far as your Disney self. Now, if I wanted to see a good Peter Pan film, may I highly suggest one of these two films? I don't think you can go wrong with one of these, especially uh, Steven Spielberg's Hook with Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman and Julia Roberts. Great film. And this one with Jason Isaacs, another great version of Captain Hook. Not a bad one at all. I highly suggest you watch these after you watch the Disney film. But anyway, Peter Pan is still a Disney classic, and there's one thing I can say about Disney classics is be it good, bad, or indifferent, it's Disney, it's magical, and it's just one of those little pieces of your childhood that you just love to latch on to, and it's also something that you want to share with other generations. So Peter Pan is going to get two and a half out of four. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Once again, I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July, unless uh, you are some viewers of mine from overseas that are not celebrating Independence Day. It's all right. Thanks for watching. So, of course, leave your comments and your thoughts on the Disney version of Peter Pan. I am the Lawn Gnome, and I'll see you soon, and actions speak louder than words.